Thank you, Anthony. Beautiful as always. So, um, just want to say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all on this communion Sunday, a gorgeous Sunday. I do thank you for taking the time out of this kind of a day to be here in this beautiful sanctuary to offer our worship on this first Sunday of May. Uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about today is, is faith as a relationship with God. And, you know, sometimes people just turn to faith um, in special times of need. And, and I got to tell you, there's an orange ladder out here. And Carol showed me yesterday how you get up into the steeple. And they're doing the work up in the steeple. And when I saw that you got to lean that ladder up against the other wall on top of like a two-story, you know, there's the stairs, the level, and then the stairs again. And you got to push that little trap door. I would have so much faith at that time. I would be praying so hard every time I went up and down that ladder. So uh, God bless him for going up there. And uh, all the ones I know John told me he was probably the last one to go up there and change those spotlights on the outside of the steeple. Um, that would definitely be a moment of faith. Uh, but what we're talking about today in today's service is a relationship of faith. Uh, God really counts faith as, a, as something personal. Uh, he takes it personal, and if, and if God takes it personal, we're supposed to take it personal. So please keep that thought in mind as we go through today's worship service. And at this point, I'd, I'd ask you to please stand if you are able for our opening hymn and candle lighting, which comes from Blue Hymn number 68, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And may we now turn to our bulletins for the call to worship. Gaze up to the heavens to see the glory of God, and let us open our eyes to behold the beauty of God's good earth all around us. We have shared in the blessings of the Creator. We have known the presence of Christ, we abide in the comfort of the Spirit. Every day we long for spiritual nourishment. Each day we are inspired by the gospel of Christ and his life among us. Let us lay our troubles at Jesus' feet. Let us enter the sanctuary that God has prepared for us, finding refuge and renewal. We 
And now coming together as this congregation in person and also on Zoom and later through FCAT, our unison prayer. Open your heavens to us, God of all worlds. We long for the purity you provide so that we may grow into the salvation you promise. Help us to live in this world as people ready to live with you in heaven's peace and glory. Give us the courage to live now according to the hopes we hold for what life will be like in your eternal reign. We are your people, sisters and brothers of your chosen one, Jesus Christ. Let us this day be built into a spiritual house, offering the community and shelter of your faithful people. Keep us from judging those whose views differ from our own or from throwing stones at those with whom we may disagree. Share with us the wisdom and empathy to live with each other with respect and justice. Incline your ear to us and rescue us from ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And could we have our young folk come up? And I, um, I forgot to make one announcement that this afternoon from 2 to 3.30 is the Franklin Association gathering, annual gathering, and it's going to be at the Conway Congregational Church and if anybody would like to go, i got to drive right by here to get up there. If you'd like to go with me, I'd be glad to pick you up right here in the parking lot and we can go. Uh, so it's at the Conway Church, 2 to 3.30, the annual gathering today. All right, so guys, you've all seen these things, right? Yeah, these computer phones. Um, I'm not the best with these. All right, here, you guys might have to help me. All right, so i got Google Maps there, right? So if I want to go here to this church, why isn't it doing anything? Because you didn't hit directions. I, oh, I have to hit, oh, well, there, okay, take care, hit directions. hit directions. 
and, and now you, and then you can hit start okay your destination is on the right all right well that was simple well thank you see i wouldn't have been able to do that without some young people help all right so these things are familiar to you i don't know about the rest of them but for me have you ever seen one of these uh, yeah. you have i mean these things here part of the fun of these was once you opened them up i was trying to get them back inside you know to fold them up again but if I wanted, you see the way this little thing here, it could tell me how to get to the church and it would, you know, just, it would just, as I'm driving along, it would tell me right away, turn here, don't, you know, go far, whatever. This thing here, look at how big I got a map and if I wanted to go from my house in Amherst to Sunderland, I'd have to find it on this thing and then after I found it, I have to follow it while I'm driving. So you try and read this as you're driving. I got in five or six, maybe seven, eight accidents trying to follow this thing. So then you got to fold it ball back up but this is what I grew up with for maps and directions this is what you grew up with for maps and directions and so now I've got to turn this off because people sometimes like to call during the middle of the service and I don't want that ringing all right so there's the old map there's the new map and we're going to talk today in the gospel about directions in life okay sometimes we need directions in life and one of the ways that you, know, you can get directions in life is maybe, you know, like, um, I just have like a feeling. You know, somebody will say, you know, I, I have a feeling that this is what I should do. If I was ever to try to drive somewhere I didn't know just by feeling, um, some people, I don't know if maybe you do this, but like when I'm in, in church and they'll say to me, it's on the south side of the building. I, don't, I have no idea where the south side of the building is. Um, you know where... Is, is he right? Is that the south side of the building? <laughs> that way? But you, so south, but it's in the same direction. He's going, there. okay, so south is somewhere. But I don't know what the south side of the building is. And people just talk about directions like this. So if I was to go according to, you know, the way I feel, if I was looking for Boston, I could end up in Los Angeles. I have no idea. No idea at all. The other thing is some people will say, you know, everybody's doing it. So maybe some direction in life is, you know, it's popular. Everybody's doing it. So we think that there was somebody who was trying to be popular on a computer phone. And don't do this. But they took their bike and they took their bike up on the roof of that building and they rode their bike across the roof, and somebody was filming it on their computer phone, I think to put up on, what is it, TikTok or, I, I don't know, whatever that stuff is. But they were riding their bike up there. And so they, they had to tell them, get off. And they just they kept riding their bike until the cops came. They got out of here before the cops came, but they were riding their bike up there. And because, well, you know, everybody's doing it, so they put it up on TikTok. Don't follow those directions. They, somebody could have fallen off of there and broke their neck. So we don't want to just follow because everybody's doing it. And so we got to look for where are we going to find directions in life. We don't have a map. We don't have a computer phone that tells us. But Jesus, is, in today's gospel, is going to tell us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so Jesus comes into the world and he gives us an example. He kind of gives us directions on how we're supposed to try to live. And if we can live like Jesus lived, or at least try to live like Jesus lived, we got a pretty good chance of following Jesus' good directions on how to live life. So when you go down to Sunday school, when you're here in church, when you come back for communion a little bit later, all of those messages from Jesus about how to live life that's probably our best advice. So I, I hope you learn about Jesus so that we can all uh, be a little bit better um, in this world that needs to be a lot better. Uh, so hopefully all of this helps. Have a great Sunday school. We'll see you for communion.
And I do believe that's their last one until the fall, correct? So thank you very much for all that that you uh, add to our service. Thank you, Bell Choir. And at this time, it's our chance to offer prayers. And let us begin with prayers for Ukraine, as we've been doing right along, that there may be peace in that region, uh, that war and hostility there may come to an end. We also continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. And we also have to pray again uh, for the seven who were shot to death yesterday in a mall outside of the city of Dallas. At least seven others were injured. They're just going out to shop on a Saturday and somebody comes in and just starts to, to shoot. Um, there is a group out there and they're trying to count these um, mass shootings and it's not easy to do. That shooting so far in 2023 is the 199th mass shooting in our country. Um, we need to do something. Uh, you know, Senator Warnock, who is the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, Martin Luther King's church down in Atlanta, said that prayers are wonderful, but you have to do something. I think we're at that point where we need to do something. 199 mass shootings to date in our country. So we pray for the ones who are killed, we, prayed for the, we pray for the ones who are injured, and we pray for our nation as well. Uh, before we hit the yellow sheet, are there any uh, joys, celebrations, concerns that anybody would like to offer? Not a hand, nothing, okay. All right, then let us turn to our yellow sheet. And remember, we're just saying first names. So let us pray for Alan, Alice, Antonia, and family, Art, Barbara, Bill, Bonnie, Carrie, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Evelyn, Frank, Jeff, Jimmy, John, John, Kathy, Martha, Melissa, Michelle, Mike, Nancy, Pauline, Prue and Bart, Cheryl, Steve, Thelma, Tim, Vinny, Virginia and Richard, Wes, Wink, victims of violence anywhere in the world, those affected by natural disasters around the globe, and we pray for peace on earth. Now, in the midst of our public worship, may we turn inward for just a few moments of silence uh, to offer those prayers to God uh, that we just can't say out loud. So just a few moments of silence. Creator and parent of all humanity and of all creation as well, whose love for all of us was revealed perfectly in the life and teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, draw us more deeply into a relationship of trust in you that will help us day by day to discern more clearly the way, the truth, and the life that you intend for us to follow the example of Jesus as our directions in life. Help us in all of humility to follow Jesus so that we are able to do the works of God. We long to become that spiritual household here in this church of mutually caring people that Jesus sought to model among us. And we ask that you hear the prayers we offer this morning, whether shared out loud or in the silence of our thoughts, answering them as you alone know best. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we now come together to share in that prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. special moments when the heavens they seem to open before us and we sense the vast possibilities for life that Jesus offers 
We long to reach our God-given potential and to offer that same opportunity to others as well. And so the offerings that we bring, as generous as we try to be, they are our offering to others to find that same gift of faith that we share in. So may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and as our conditions in life allow, and donations will be accepted now in person, but they may also be mailed here to the church. However you give, it is very much appreciated. Accept, O Lord, these gifts now to be placed in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. In today's gospel, we will hear that whatever we ask God in Jesus' name, it will be granted. Boy, I wish that were true. There is so much that is harmful and painful in our world, but maybe Jesus is saying that all that can be true if we continue the work of Jesus, if we allow Jesus to work through us, if we are church to the best of our abilities, then maybe all of those good hopes that we have, maybe they can come true. Not by just Jesus alone, not by some kind of magic, but by God inspiring us to be like Jesus. So may these gifts that you offer freely, may they help us to be the church and the people that God needs. I thank you for your generosity and may God bless these gifts so they may continue to share that message that Jesus gave us as his gospel and his life. In God's name we pray, amen. And today's gospel is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. And Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and then we will be satisfied. But Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. 
but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, it will be done. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be accepted to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Last Sunday is my birthday, as you all know, and I appreciated the greetings I received from family and friends. Sharon even made me chocolate mousse, which is one of my favorites, and I had to hide that in the basement refrigerator so my daughter didn't grab them all before I had a chance to. And then also I checked my mails and my texts when I got home, and that's when I saw all of these wishes from like my dentist's office, uh, the car dealership where we bought our car. It's not even my car, it's Sharon's car. My bank sent me one, Brigham and Women's Hospital and the Red Cross because I donate blood when I can. And my credit card company all sent me birthday wishes. Now, I know that none of those texts, none of those emails are personal. When you sang me happy birthday last Sunday, that was personal. It meant a lot. But none of those other ones, they cared that it was my birthday. They were generated by some computer program to send out that message to everyone whose birthday just happens to fall on that day. And then when that was over, the computer program generated a whole other list for the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And so, you know, they, they're not special at all. They're just ways of doing business. And I realize that businesses want to create a relationship with their customers. They want it to seem like their motive is so much more personal than profitable. But the insincerity of some of their efforts, at least to me, it just seems offensive. You know, they, they leave me with the impression of being fake and gimmicky. They, and, you know, there's anything but sincerity when they try to act like they're being personal. I feel like they also treat me as somewhat dim-witted, like I can't see through these computer-generated birthday wishes, and I really think like the, the president and CEO of some gigantic corporation like Chase, you know, the one that just bought another bank that collapsed, and they're so huge, and they know Randy Calvo. How silly do they think I am? And the reason I rant on about such a thing is that today's two readings they share a biblical ideal that is the perfect opposite of generated or computer generated birthday wishes. Businesses can be large. You know, like my dentist, it's not a huge corporation, but I guarantee my dentist does not know when my birthday is. I don't know when his birthday is. And corporations are absolutely humongous. But we come together in the God of all creation, that beautiful day outside, the God of all creation, the God of all peoples, here in Sunderland, all around the country, all around the world, all of those people of all times and generations, that God who is so much larger than any kind of corporation. You know, one corporation, my credit card company, they sent me a birthday wish and they said, Randy, if you want, use this credit card and buy yourself something special for your birthday. How personal, how personal is that? But that huge corporation sent me that personally on my birthday. But the God who's so much bigger than all of creation, all peoples, all generations, all corporations, that God knows us each by name. It is the opposite of a computer-generated birthday list. With God, this thing that we call faith, it's extremely personal. So if I had to go up on that orange ladder and push open that little hatchway to get up into that steeple, I would be praying my deepest faith that God keep me safe. But that's understandable. But faith is not for moments. Faith is a relationship. In the message that Donna shared with us today, we're reading a letter sent by a church leader to a community of believers. So basically like a pastor to a church 2,000 years ago. And scholars believe, though, that that community was located among people who were living at the very fringe of the Roman Empire. They were isolated. They were alone. They were living in a dangerous circumstance. If you ever watch Westerns, you know, those movies of the old American frontier, 
take those images of those families out there. No neighbor in sight anywhere. You know, a long horse ride away. If you know anything goes wrong and you need a doctor or something, who knows where the nearest town is. Imagine that kind of thing and apply it to the community that First Peter is talking to. Use that imagery to understand what is behind and motivating the statement, once you were not a people, but now you're God's people. So once you were all in isolation, in other words, you were all alone, you were on your own, you were basically strangers to one another, but now, says First Peter, you're God's people. God has brought you together as a community of faith, and that community itself is seen as a blessing. Life shared with each other raises not only the community, but each person within that community. We become more than we can ever be on our own. And so to these people who may have felt and forgotten, may have felt unimportant, that the ones in authority did not know who they were, that they didn't matter all that much, Rome is so far away, they can't possibly know about me out here on the fringe of the Roman Empire. Peter, inspired by God, tells them, instead you are a chosen race. You are instead a royal priesthood. You are instead a holy nation. You are instead God's own people. Rome, says Peter, you may not matter much to them, like a computer-generated birthday wish. But in the eyes of God, it's personal. God knows you. You are chosen. You are royal. You are holy. You are God's own people. God has called us together into this community. And before, when we were just like isolated, we are now God's own people. And that's the church. And that's a blessing. And something we don't often think about, it's an honor. It is an honor to be a part of the church. And so this honor of being a part of the church, known to God and recognizing God, that elevates us. And it helps us to because we look out for one another as well. Connections are formed that make us all stronger. So today is also the first Sunday of children, or the first day of Children's Mental Health Acceptance Week. And it used to be called Children's Mental Health um, Awareness Week, but that was changed to acceptance because the idea is that you, know, you can be aware of maybe mental health in somebody else, but acceptance means that you understand and you, you, you accept them, you bring them in, you don't separate from them. So church gets that same message and it shares that message of acceptance. You know, think about how we begin in one way or the other, every single one of our worship services, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Or look at what we print in the bulletin every communion Sunday. All are welcome at the communion table. If you come through that door and you feel called to come to this table, we do not set up a litmus test that says, well, we think better and maybe you have to wait. Maybe, you know, we won't give it to you. No, if you feel called by God, you are invited. All are welcome at that table. And that's the opposite of a computer-generated birthday wish. Community and acceptance they're real for us because they're real for God. And this message is repeated and expanded in today's gospel. Its scope is broadened beyond this life into all of eternity. You know, death is often, you know, understood as the, the great separator. You know, you've got someone you love, care about, someone who's dear to you. They're with you in life for how many years, and all of a sudden death, they're gone physically. But Jesus today says, no, the relationship continues. Imagine the setting. This is the symbolic Last Supper right here. And Jesus is at the Last Supper, at table with his closest friends and followers. And in, in that air, you know, death lingers in that air, in that upper room. You know, Jesus knows it, the disciples fear it. And this is when Jesus says today in the gospel, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus is assuring them, Jesus is assuring us that the relationship continues even unto heaven. You know, several times I've, I've gone to funerals, and in the funeral home, they have those memorial cards. And one of my favorites is uh, Jesus, and I've got a few of these, and Jesus is on the other side of this life, and somebody has just crossed the threshold. You know, they're in regular, you know, earthly human life clothes. There's no halo, there's no wings, there's no aura. They've just transitioned. And on the other side, Jesus has just got them in this great big bear hug. And I think of that message about, you know, I will go ahead of you. I will prepare a place. And so that where I am, there you may be also. And Jesus just holding us. 
all of that fear of death, all of that scariness of transition, what's on the other side? And you open your eyes and there's Jesus holding you. I think that's what faith means. It's relationship. Jesus knows us each by name. It's personal. It's not just crawling up a ladder and saying, Jesus, make sure I don't fall. It's a relationship. For God, that faith is personal. So that means it should be for us as well. It's real in this life and it continues on into the next. And going through the motions of faith, making them mechanical or talking about faith as an obligation, that's the one that bothers me the most. Like you have to go like a job. It denies the depth of what we are being called toward, a relationship with the Almighty and with each other. I, I saw a friend's Facebook post and in the Facebook post, they had just opened up their swimming pool. And I imagine that water had to be ice cold. And they put on Facebook a challenge to their friend. And they named the friend. And they said, you come on over. You jump into the pool. I'll give you $50. And I can only imagine. I don't go into the pool unless it's 88 degrees. I, I hate cold water. So this, they're, they're, they're saying, come on over and jump. And it was before a day like this. Come on over. I'll give you $50 if you jump in the pool. And that imagery, sometimes with faith, we're a little bit timid. We might put in a toe. We might give Jesus a little bit of our attention. We might give Jesus a chance to do something. But sometimes you just got to jump in, the whole body. And just, even if it's cold, you just got to take that jump in and go all the way in because that's the way Jesus and that, that bear hug, that's the way he thinks about you. And we got to think the same about Jesus. Just jump in and Jesus will be there to hold us. So I pray that we may all celebrate as being God's chosen people and also that the closeness that we offer through this Holy Communion table, that that may only add to our joy. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are able, I invite you to please stand for our communion hymn, which is Red Hymn number 288, Let Us Break Bread Together. I believe you all have a communion insert in your bulletins. This table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. The gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, and that same day sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Women and men, youth and children, wherever you are, gather around Christ's table. For this table is for all people.
who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God the Most High. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and love. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the light and life of your grace, to suffer on the cross for us, to be raised from death, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church among us, and with your daughters and sons of faith in all times, all places, we praise you with joy by saying, Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, of God and Messiah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of his betrayal and desertion, that Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the bread. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. Ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the cup. And may we now share in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And our next hymn is in the bulletin. That's right, Shalom to you now. So it is printed in your bulletin. Thank you.
thank you again for coming out on this beautiful Sunday, and I do hope you can enjoy the rest of it. And if you want to enjoy the rest of it up in Conway, uh, we have that church gathering from 2 until 3.30 at the church. And if you want to ride, I can gladly pick you up right here on my way through town. Yes? Don't forget to come next door and take a look at Okay, and you can take books and leftover cookies for the ride to Conway. So hopefully you'll all enjoy. So let us now share in our benediction and our closing. Jesus sends us out onto paths of service. We are summoned to greater works than we could ever accomplish on our own. We are chosen and empowered as representatives of Christ. We are the church, the body of Christ on earth, and that is an honor. Jesus has gone ahead of us to prepare a place for us. Following in his way, we know the fullness of this life. We believe God dwells in us and God dwells among us. God's mighty acts are revealed through us, and with strong confidence in our faith, let us now go forth to love and serve the Lord among all whom we may meet. Amen.